Okay, hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Uh, it is still April 7th, 2013, and um, I've been playing around tonight with a slightly different setup on the Zero Lens Effect test gizmo. And I have my oscilloscope hooked up right here to the toggle switch that flips the coil between the output here to the scope and to the driver. Uh, here's my Hall effect sensor picking up the magnets moving by. I have all north facing magnets facing out. But what's different tonight is I'm using three quarter inch diameter disc magnets that are half inch thick. Neodymium N42s I believe they are. I don't think they're N52s. Um, and they are they are at a 60 degree angle to one another. There are six of them in the drum now as opposed to four of the large rectangular magnets. And the geometry of these magnets in relation to the width of the coil I believe may be playing a role in the effect that I'm seeing tonight because um, <sighs> I'm starting to see what, what, what Sky Collection may have been trying to demonstrate, even if he did not understand what it was that, uh, that was causing the effect. Because his drum also has six magnets in it. And if you, if you look closely at the magnets as they pass by the pancake coil, all right? Here's my, here's my pancake coil right here, all right? It is about two inches wide. Okay, and if you look at it in relation to the position of the magnets as they pass by, you see that as one magnet is dead center, there are two magnets to either side of the pancake coil whose fields are also interacting with the coil at this point. Now, even though this is the strongest field at the center, these fields outside are also acting on the pancake coil. The voltage is being induced at the center, but what I believe is happening is the lens effect is being canceled at the perimeter of the pancake coil by the magnets leaving and approaching. Okay, I probably only have just over one millimeter gap uh, between the pancake coil and this and this drum. The drum itself is three sixteenths of an inch thick clear PVC, so that's as close as these magnets can come to the to the center of the coil. So roughly a quarter of an inch of spacing still between the the surface of these magnets and the center of the coil. But even with that large gap spacing, I'm able to get about four volts peak to peak output voltage with this coil. And I see very, very little voltage sag when I place this load, this incandescent bulb, across it. So where I might get four volts peak to peak with the with the uh, wheel free win free free spinning, all right, I might get maybe mm, three point eight volts peak to peak, or three point eight five volts peak to peak when I attach the bulb. What's interesting is, if you remember in my previous videos when I short circuited the drive coil after I spun the spun the drum up. I got a very rapid braking effect. Okay, so I'm seeing a similar induced voltage, but I want you to see what the braking effect is this time. Okay, here are my two leads, and I'm wearing a lapel microphone. So I will put the lapel microphone down near the near the uh, apparatus when when it's spinning. All right. I'm only going to bring it up to about 6,000 RPM. 
because these fats are getting pretty hot. I need to put the Arduino on here to uh, to play around with the pulse pul pulse duty cycle. But it's coming up to speed. stop by now. This is a dead short. And even with a dead short condition, I'm still seeing voltage coming out of here. Alright. Spin it up again. Flip the switch this time, it will be the incandescent bulb that is the load across, across this. Now, there's still not enough voltage to light the filament on this bulb. Nonetheless, this is the same resistive load. This is not an LED. magnets I have six and I don't have rectangular shaped magnets where the field is crossing the entire height of the pancake coil it is only crossing the, the, uh, the, uh, the winding at right angles as it passes by So I've made no changes to this coil from the last test setup. This is four single winding pancake coils, not by filler pancake coils, four single winding pancake coils, and they are stacked and layered on top of one another, connected in series, and by doing so, they become by filler. In fact, this is quad filler, if you will. Um, This is really quite phenomenal. There is definitely an effect, and it, it is not just due to the pancake coil itself, but it is also due to the magnet geometry. Now, right now, I have all six magnets with the north pole facing out. An option for me to try is to alternate every other magnet and go north, south, north, south, north, south. Quite certain that I will get more output from the coil, but I may also get a lot of lens drag. I'm not sure. Uh, what I do know for sure, though, is if I do go north, south, north, south, what will happen is these magnets inside the frame will try to pull inward towards one another and meet at the center. So I'll have to have some sort of block in the middle to prevent them from collapsing in, into themselves because they are very, very strong magnets. But uh, that's where we're at. I'm not making any claims yet. I still have to still have to study this quite a bit, but from what I've seen so far, um, yeah, yeah, I'm 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 seeing positive results here. Positive results. And that's all for now from the from the lab. 
Everyone take care. I hope you enjoy this little Ustream video. I'll leave it up as long as I can. And uh, I will tweet the URL to this video momentarily. Everyone take care. And of course, peace.